Today on the audio hotline, we have a broadcast style dynamic XLR microphone. This microphone is from 512 Audio, a pretty new company as of this review. And this microphone is the Limelight. So I was really excited when 512 Audio reached out to me being associated with Warm Audio since I do think they make good products. Well, I can't say that they full on reached out to me. Actually, Bandrew from Podcastage kind of introduced 512 Audio and myself. So thanks for that, Bandrew. You're the greatest. But also thank you 512 Audio for sending this microphone over for review. They didn't ask me to give it a good review. They are not paying me. They are not sponsoring this. They just asked me for an honest review. But here shortly, we'll get into all the details of this review. We'll go through the specs of the limelight, the features. We'll test the absolute hell out of it. And we'll just do the whole thing. But first, let's get mic. Welcome all audio nerds to the audio hotline, and as I said before, we have the 512 Limelight Dynamic Broadcast Style Microphone in the studio. This little guy, this goes in there usually, it'll cost you about $200. And actually, I do have another 512 Audio Microphone that I will be reviewing here shortly in the future. It is the Skylight Condenser Microphone, and actually both of the microphones, the Limelight and the Skylight, have been released at $200. But today I have the limelight recording into my motu m2 which is going into my macbook pro and actually i'm recording this in adobe audition which i literally never do i don't know why i'm doing that i usually do logic pro x but whatever just trying stuff out today but this is in fact an xlr microphone something does feel a little off here do you guys want to see something cool <laughs> but in addition to taking you through the specs and the features and everything, I will also be doing a blind comparison with this microphone. I will label whatever microphones I'm going to use up on the screen right now. I'll try to have it be a somewhat similar price tag and everything. Like, I will definitely include the Procaster over there. But I'll also include some $100 microphones, maybe some, you know, a little bit more expensive microphones. And we'll just really see how this fits in with those. But let's just go ahead and jump right in and talk about what comes in the box when you purchase the 512 Limelight. When you purchase the 512 Audio Limelight, it will come with a zipped pouch for storage and traveling. It will come with an adjustable swivel mount that you mount the microphone on. It will come with a 3 8 to 5 8 inch microphone stand adapter. It will come with some documentation as well as the microphone itself, the 512 Audio Limelight. Now when it comes to what's included with this microphone for $200, I don't necessarily think it's bad or anything. I think it's all acceptable. I'm actually usually a very big fan of the swivel mount just so you can, you know, adjust the microphone to be exactly where you want it to be and everything. But with this one, I have a little bit of frustration with it. Even when you loosen this part up, which will allow you to take the microphone out of the swivel mount, it never gets loose enough that it's easy to take the microphone off, if that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry about that noise, but uh, you get the point. Now when it comes to the build of the microphone itself, it's actually pretty light. The construction itself feels solid and everything, so that's good, but it's just a little bit alarming how light it is. It actually doesn't feel like the grill has like much give at all when I push in on it, but when I was grabbing the mic just a second ago to push in and see if the grill was like that, I noticed this. <laughs> Don't love that. But now that we've talked about what comes with this microphone and the build quality, now let's go ahead and talk about just the couple features that this microphone has. In all reality, the only feature that this microphone does have is a high pass filter that does get a little bit hidden by the actual swivel mount. This high pass filter will roll your bass off at 100 hertz at 12 decibels per octave. Now, I personally do like having a high pass filter option on a microphone, but I will say on broadcast style, like dynamic microphones, I feel like I tend to not usually like the high pass filter a whole lot. Some of them just seem a little too aggressive and cut out a lot of low end, but we'll test that out here in a little bit. But now that we've talked about what comes with this microphone and the build quality, and we went through the features, now let's go ahead and nerd out 
and talk about the specs. The 512 Audio Limelight features a dynamic capsule that is 28 millimeters in size. This has a hypercardioid polar pattern, a frequency range of 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz. This has a sensitivity of negative 54 decibels, an impedance of 600 ohms, and a max SPL of 138 decibels. Well, now let's go ahead and get into the important stuff and start testing this microphone out. Following these tests that I do every time will be the blind comparison. While I'm doing these tests, I usually state what test I'm doing, but I will also have it labeled in the lower third of this video. This microphone didn't come with a windscreen or pop filter or anything, but I will occasionally include a pop filter in these tests just so you can see how that would sound. But let's go ahead and kick it off with a proximity effect test. Now, if you get really close to this microphone and just give it a little sniffy sniff, it smells kind of like Thai food. I know your question. Did you eat Thai food? I did not. So that's weird. Now, this next test is going to be a little bit loud. Let's go ahead and do some plosives. Peter Parker picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 Now, if you're going to be talking into a microphone while you type on some really loud MX Cherry Blues, here's how this microphone would reject that sound. Now, to test the polar pattern out even more, let's go ahead and do a white noise test. Now let's go ahead and do just a real quick distance test. Right now I'm about five inches away from the microphone. Now I'm about a foot away from the microphone. Now I have the microphone off screen and it's about two feet away. Now here's a quick post-processing test. Right now I'm just doing some compression, some limiting. I'm not doing any EQ whatsoever. Just so you can hear how the characteristic of this microphone sounds with some compression on it and maybe some DSing, I'll label whatever I use up on the screen right now. Now let's go ahead and test out that high pass filter and see how much low end it cuts. Here is the microphone in flat mode and here is the microphone with the high pass filter on, low cut filter, whatever you want to call it. But now let's go ahead and do my favorite test, the kitty purr test. And it's actually super convenient because blue has been laying on my feet this whole review. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take you through a couple other tests. First the acoustic guitar, then the electric guitar. Did you get it? Because that was the song Limelight by Rush, and this is the Limelight microphone. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and kick off this blind comparison. Once again, here are the microphones that are going to be in this comparison, and I will just be labeling them A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. Then after the blind comparison, I will reveal which microphone was associated with what letter. Right now, you're listening to a microphone that won't be included in the comparison. We're just using it as a real quick palate cleanser. <laughs> All right, let's get into the comparison. Now to kick off the comparison, here is the sound of microphone A. Now here is the sound of microphone B. Here is the sound of microphone C. Now here is the sound of microphone D. Now here is the sound of microphone E. Now here is the sound of microphone F. Here is microphone A. 
A as in ape shit. Here is microphone C, C as in catawampus. Here is microphone E, E as in erratic eel erection. Here is the sound of microphone B, B as in banana hammock. Here is microphone D, D as in don't do dat. Here is microphone F, F as in frankly, Frank is a douche. Once again, here is the erratic eel erection microphone, microphone E. Here is the ape shit microphone, microphone A. Here is the don't do dat microphone, microphone D. Here is the banana hammock microphone, microphone B. Here is the frankly, Frank is a douche microphone, microphone F. Once again, here is the catawampus microphone, microphone C. Now to reveal which microphones were associated with which letters. First, microphone A was the Electro Voice RE20. Microphone B was the Rode Procaster. Microphone C, the microphone that is currently being reviewed, <laughs> the 512 Skylight. Microphone D was the Samsung Q9U. Microphone E was the H&A AC50. And microphone F was the Audio-Technica AT2040. Well, now that we've gone over the accessories, we went over the specs, we tested this microphone out, and we put it in a pretty big comparison. Now that all of that is out of the way, now let's go ahead and get to my review, my opinion opinion of the 512 audio limelight but very briefly just so you know this is actually a little custom pop filter that i bought off of etsy for the pod mic i think it was only like 10 bucks but it actually fits on this microphone decently well so i was gonna just try it out but speaking of my opinion of this microphone usually i don't really share my opinion when it comes to the comparison. I include the comparison so you can make your own decision. I actually gave myself a full blind comparison of these microphones, well, with some help. But actually when I did that, the Limelight was one of my least favorite sounding microphones in that comparison. I did pick the RE20 and Procaster first. And let me just say the Procaster is a great microphone for the price. That thing is solid. But even when it came to cheaper microphones than the Limelight, I still wasn't crazy about the sound of it. And the real reason I bring this up isn't to tell you my opinion of the microphones. Like I said, it's your call what you liked and what you want to get. But the reason that I bring it up is just to show how important some sound comparisons can be. If you can get some audio samples of some different microphones and a similar price tag of a microphone that you're interested in, it can make a world of difference in your buying decision. When I first got this microphone, I recorded some samples and everything, and I listened back and I was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's okay, it's fine. And at the beginning of this review when I was listening to it and when I was editing it and just it alone with no comparison, I was thinking, yeah, you know, it's a little dark. It's not my favorite microphone, but I think for $200, it's pretty good. But now that I've listened to that comparison and kind of went back and listened to my review and some more sound samples of this microphone, I've got to say that I'm actually not too crazy about it. Do I think it's an absolutely terrible microphone? No, I don't. Do I think there are people that would enjoy the sound? Yeah. I could actually see people that have like very, very high voices, maybe preferring something like this where it has, you know, some more low mids and lows and is a little bit darker. But personally, I just think there are some better options out there. A part of me is absolutely rooting for 512 Audio and me saying not so great things about it, honestly, kind of hurts a little bit. But I was honestly shocked how much the H&A AC50 sounded pretty similar to this microphone. And that mic is less than $100. And they do you know, kind of resemble each other. Before I let that other guy finish whatever the hell he's talking about, I do just want to jump in and talk about a couple things. In pretty much all of my videos, what I do is I shoot the portion from the beginning to the end of testing and the comparison. Then I take all that footage and the audio samples and I go and edit that to completion. And the biggest reason I do that is so that I can hear the product even more and really form my opinion of it. And the majority of the time, it really helps me not miss anything, but I still missed something this time. And I noticed it while I was editing the review portion of this video. There's a very weird hum when this microphone isn't in flat mode and when the low cut filter is engaged. I'm not sure if it's just the microphone that I have or if others experienced this. I've stayed away from the other reviews before I put mine out because I don't want them to alter my mind hole, you know, my face brain. But let me go ahead and give you a sample of that hum that I'm talking about. Mm. 
if every limelight has this, I personally would recommend just staying away from the low cut filter and doing it with like a EQ plugin. Maybe a little hum isn't that big of a deal to some people, but I know that that would just bug me. The low cut definitely does, you know, thin this microphone out quite substantially. And this microphone is pretty dark, but I still think that the low cut is a little too aggressive. So just remember when the other guy's mentioning cons here in a minute, just mentally, you know, add a little plus sign and be like, hey, that hum with the low cut filter and the placement of the low cut filter. Those are on that list also. All right, well, I'll let you get back to the other fella. But to sum it up, for $200, I don't think the build quality is great. The accessories aren't amazing. I don't know, there are just nicer accessories that come with items that are much cheaper than this. And most importantly, I'm not crazy about the sound. But I'm sure there are some people out there that will prefer it over other microphones that were in that comparison. And that's totally fine. Audio is subjective and it is your opinion and your choice what microphone to buy. But if you're looking for like a spoken word podcasting microphone, I would absolutely recommend the Rode Procaster for only $30 more than this. The grade that I give the 512 Audio Limelight is a 69%. And when I say that, I'm basically just saying that I personally don't think that this is worth the $200. I just think there are better options out there. But thank you all for watching this review of the 512 Audio Limelight. I hope it helped you out, helped you decide whether you want to get one of these or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more reviews and comparisons and a lot of other videos. And I do thank 512 Audio for sending this microphone over for review. I really do appreciate when companies are willing to help this channel out. And a big thank you to everyone that watches and subscribes to the Audio Hotline. You guys are so awesome. And a big, big, big thank you to everyone that's a member of the Audio Hotline. There's not a word for how amazing you all are. But once again, thank you all for watching the Audio Hotline. I'll see all you audio nerds next time.